Warning, do not listen to this podcast if hearing about freedom and liberty is not legal for you in your community. And if so, you should immediately move to a hipper community. Welcome to the Freedom Fiends Podcast, a weekly web lab where Michael W. Dean and Nima Vadadi cover the punk rockinist, hip hopinist current events, as well as timeless universal truths about life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness, because there's no such thing as half free. The Freedom Fiends Podcast, available from freedomfiends.com. That's F R E E D O M F E E N S dot com. Freedom Fiends is proudly syndicated by Alterati.com and the Liberty Radio Network at LRN.FM. Welcome to the Freedom Fiends Distance Learning Anarchy Series with Freedom Fiends Michael W. Dean. Broadcasting from my windowless bunker. And Nima Vidati. Go, go, Freedom Fiends! I'm recording. Yo, I'm, fiends. I'm truly windowless. There's there's no birds near me. You're in a windowless bunker. I guess the birds yep. I'm here under my uh, on my end. You're birdless. You said. I'm birdless. Yeah, I have no access to birds. You have a court order to stay away from birds. <laughs> yeah, yes, yeah. yes. Restraining order against the birds. birds. Yeah, it's, restraining it's so order we, we, right, against it's, nature. <laughs> it's so I can't use carrier pigeons to deliver fiends episodes. That's why they did it, right? Yeah, they're putting a kibosh on that, <laughs> bastards. Kibosh. So, what's up, man? Chilling, man. Sipping my coffee out of my Freedom Fiends mug and talking to you on the mumbles. Yep. 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 We have a lot of listeners, but we haven't sold a lot of mugs. I'll say that. <laughs> we we sold we we haven't sold a lot of buttons either. Everyone says they want buttons, but no one's ordering them. But yeah, yeah. you know what I'm going to do? Buy some stuff, y'all. Buy some yeah. stuff. I gave them to the Fiends donators, but uh, yeah, I'm not going to hold them ransom or anything. What I'm going to do, I think we're going to do is uh, I, if I don't sell any soon, I think I'm going to um, do something Spring. with them. No. F that, man. <laughs> F that. This isn't the Scott Horton show. No, I love him. <laughs> I like how he He doesn't scream. Money. He just sort of complains <laughs> like, what? You're not going to give me money? Yeah, I know. He's real cool about it. No, yeah. I think what we're going to do is we're going to go to uh, to wholesale only for buttons. To where, like, if you want to buy buttons, you have to buy, like, 100 of them and sell them and give them away. But they'll be that's cheap, the best. Too. I don't know if that's the best business strategy, but that's we'll, what I'm we'll doing, talk man. about it. That's what I'm doing. <laughs> okay. That's okay. Where, Barbies. That's what we're talking about. Barbies. Yeah, that's what we're talking about. So, yeah. Ben. Ben rocks, man. Ben Stone? Yeah. Do you hear no, his, ben, uh, ben doesn't rock Ben Stones. <clears throat> yes. His Monday podcast bashed Stefan Molyneux, called audit, audit the Fed people sheep, and said Walter Block is senile. <laughs> it was kind he's, of, going, he's going for the gusto now, isn't he? He's, I know. he's coming to his own, and he's like, screw you guys. Yep. Wow. Go Ben. You know. Although, you, you know, Ben doesn't really bash people in like no. – uh, an ad hominem sense. No. He he just takes apart arguments that he has problems with, and I think he does it well. In, in the Stefan Molyneux thing, you know, he was saying, I'm sure, you know, Molyneux is an expert on family raising and things like that, but he's using that expertise wrongly here. You know, that doesn't make him an expert on karate or sports, and he shouldn't say that just want to hit people. Uh, you were hit as a kid, and that's also the root of the state. Um, so, so Ben wasn't hating on, on Stefan. He was just explaining something about a uh, Stefan Molyneux argument that he had problems yeah. with. And uh, Stefan took a lot of crap for that, you know, I, and I gave him crap for it too. Um, in my, well, it was a pod beef with Adam Kokesh. It's now become a discussion with Adam Kokesh, although he takes a couple days to get back to things. He's a busy guy, but he mm-hmm. did respond, you know, respectfully and cogently after, you know, we called each other fags and assholes on Facebook or whatever and said, fuck <laughs> off. But uh, it's it's reached a civil level, which is why in the blog post on Freedom Fiends blog, I used a picture of two men's hands shaking hands. Yes. And, you know, and I'm, I'm glad for that. I'm yeah. And he's like, don't just call me a dumb frat boy. Tell me specifically what I did wrong. I didn't call yeah. him a dumb. I called him a smart frat boy, actually. But I did say, read some books. Uh, read a book. 
But um, <laughs> yeah, in that, you know, I talked about how uh, Stefan Molyneux had recently, you know, he'd done the same thing with BDSM and I'd taken him to task for it. And then he'd done it again with uh, karate or any martial arts saying, you know, if you do that, it's just hitting. There's nothing more to it than that. And, uh, you know, it's from a bad childhood. And Ben took him to task for that. I took stuff on to task for that. And um, it's such sent- a basic thing, too. I mean, yeah, we've talked about that before. That You know, if I played football in high school, I don't feel like that was statist to play football. I don't feel like I was in it for violence. There's no violence if it's voluntary. Or I guess there's violence, but there's no aggression right. if it's voluntary. MMA, you know, where you beat each other to a bloody pulp is not aggression. It doesn't violate the non-aggression principle. Right. Both go into it understanding that you can get the bloody pulp beaten out of you and your goal is to beat the bloody pulp out of somebody else. There's nothing there's nothing against libertarianism or the NAP with that. Yeah, if you haven't read uh my reply to Stefan Molyneux, which is a lot, I mean to uh Adam Kokesh, which is a lot better than my original post to him, go read it. It's the one on uh Freedom Fiends blog. And it's got two men's hands shaking hands on it. Well, what, what has Stefan done about this? Has he corrected his mistake? Has, Not I that mean, I know of, but uh, you know, I'm too busy to listen to everything. But um, I've followed people. Hundreds of people took him to task about the uh, the, the karate, uh, you know, saying that. Which, you know, I mean, I guess there's a larger installed user base than there is with BDSM to defend it. Or it's, you know, another thing is like, I, I mean, I seem like... I'm the only, the only. Uh... Well, Stefan got it immediately when right, when you right. and him were talking about BDSM. You did not budge an inch. You were like, no, 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 no. You, yeah, you're, you're wrong about this, Stefan. Here's why. And Stefan took a step back and said, you know what? I haven't studied as much as you have. Obviously, yeah. uh, I'll I'll sort of defer to you. And your point uh, is logically consistent. And Stefan yeah. agreed with you in the end. And I know that there are a lot of. Um, People who practice BDSM, I mean, it's probably like 5% of the world or something like that, you know, or have those inklings. Uh, but a lot of people won't step up to defend it because you can be, you know, people people get disowned for, for admitting they're into that. Or people have lost their kids in divorces for that or lost their jobs. Or in the UK, you can go to prison for it. You know, in the UK, mm. they actually have task forces to stop people from practicing BDSM in the privacy of their own home between consenting adults. Oh, wow. They Basically, if you do anything that leaves a mark, yeah. e- even you know consensually and even temporary mark that fades after a couple of days, you know even even paddling someone on the ass who loves it really you know hard once will leave a mark for a couple of days. That is a prisonable offense in the UK because they want to protect their livestock. Well, apparently the state in the UK is a bit more jealous about its monopoly on violence than uh, than other states like yeah. the United States. Apparently, yeah. They don't want and to again, piss off the gay voters here. A lot of gay guys are into kink too. It's or are really open about it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's a big bloated vote, bloating block, voting block. <laughs> well, the thing about the whole gay issue is it's it's so politicized that you don't have to be gay to vehemently support gay rights. Um, you know, there's a whole lot of people that aren't gay, but will defend it as if they were part of that group, which is a really good thing. It's a, I think it's a really good thing even if you're not a part of a community to defend that community's freedom. Although I they mean, all always go to laws with it or almost unfor- always, but un- unfortunately, yeah. And you know, even though there's a lot of gay people into kink, there's really no lobby for kink. And most, yeah. a lot of people have a really wrong opinion of it, especially in the liberty community, which blows me away because people say things about kink. And kink, I believe, is not a choice. It's something that's you're wired with the same way that if you're gay. Um, and a lot of people I've talked to who are kinky feel the same way. And, you know, it's basically people will say absurd things about kink. Even libertarians and anarchists will say things about kink that if you just substituted the word gay, no one would ever listen to that person again. You know? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, whatever floats your boat, right? I mean, that's that should be the libertarian stance on it. Yeah. As long as you don't hurt yeah. somebody else, whatever tickles your pickle. I mean, whatever <laughs> gets you off. Who cares? Yeah. If, it, yeah, if, it, and if, it, if it's dressing up, if it's uh, bondage, if it's submission, if it's, if it's other dudes or other tranny, chicks. Tranny hookers and crocodile. Crocodile tranny hookers. Who cares? Yeah. Who cares? Yeah. And, you know, a lot of people's misconceptions of kink come from Hollywood movies and TV. And uh, the Hollywood loves to use kink as a plot device 
uh, for murderers and serial killers and torturers. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. they always get it wrong. The closest I've seen to them getting it right is a CSI character named Lady Heather, who, you know, has is drawn with some depth and compassion and kind of accurately from a lot of doms or, I mean, dom A's. Right. Well, dom A is fe- a female dom. Uh, dominatrix usually means uh, pr- a pro, but you know, dom A, it's actually pronounced dom the same as a male, but it's D-O-M-M-E, so people say dom A when speaking to uh, okay. differentiate them. So a okay. lot of dom, like that dom A is painted accurately, but she's in her personal life, but she's also a pro, and within about three episodes, she murders someone by whipping him to death, you know? So, mm. so hmm. there's, there, there aren't any well, good kink role models, and I'm willing to step up to the plate. Well, step up then. I mean, why don't you? What what does kink mean then? Because people do have a lot of misconceptions. Is it just whips and chains? When you no. say kink, what do you? I don't. Mean? I don't have any chains. Uh, I love okay. whips. Um. Uh, we should do another episode on that. I got a lot. To, we got a lot to cover today. Um. Okay. A little teaser for the females. You know, basically, BDSM. Stand, it's a compound adjective. It's bondage, domination, uh, bondage, discipline, domination, and submission. Sadism and masochism, uh, okay. which is really not that accurate. I mean, basically, it's like the easiest way to say it is, you know, one partner having a little control, a little to a lot to absolute control over the other person voluntarily agreed upon ahead of time. And the thing yeah. a lot of people don't know is that the sub, the person who, you know, waits on the other person and either in bed or out of bed or both, it can vary, um, actually has a lot of the power, you know, possibly mm-hmm. more than the dominant. Um, mm-hmm. in definitely in picking the person in finding the person um, in laying the ground rules a lot of a lot of people do what's called a slave contract which sounds ridiculous but it's not really slavery in the sense of you know the, the old well, kind there's of a con- there's a contract that's voluntary right. so it's not slavery right. in the in the sense that we would define it and slave contracts among BDSM couples are not honored in court ever except they are mm. used in court sometimes against people <laughs> uh, when it suits the state yeah I yeah. see. I see. Well, the thing is, I feel like there's a little bit of domination or submission in in just average sex. The act a lot of, fucking, a lot of average active, sex. Yeah. I mean, yeah. it's kind of animalistic, no matter how gentle it is. It's you know something penetrating something else, whether it's a male and a male, or female and male, or two females or whatever. You know, it, something is is. <laughs> I mean, I think the word fuck means uh you know to is from a german verb meaning to strike or penetrate and it's kind of uh, accurate hmm. you know yeah 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 well i mean even even from the girls end i mean sometimes the girls gets into it and she's all like you know F me harder and, yeah. come on clawing yeah. slapping you know yeah yeah exactly yeah Just scratching the back and all sorts of stuff <clears throat> a lot of what it comes down to is that the brain center of pleasure is geographically in the brain right next to the brain's center for pain uh, and sometimes there's crossed wires, and I don't know that that's a bad thing. You know, I mean, yeah. it's it, it's you know one thing being perceived as another thing. To where when you're really turned on or excited, you know, a small bit of pain, a face slap or an ass slap or whatever, doesn't necessarily feel like pain. It can feel quite right. the opposite. Well, it's all, it's all of, it's all intense nerve <laughs> stimulation. It's all of the yeah. same kind in that regard. And within the rainbow of activities that would be defined covered by BDSM or kink, which I use as interchangeable. Uh, phrases um there are you know there are couples that would never strike each other that are kinky you know one person yeah. waits on the other and bows for them you know i mean the mm-hmm. the 50s idea of the woman meeting her husband at the door after when he comes home from work you know wearing nothing but a french maid's outfit and holding a martini and a smile uh <laughs> that's kink that's you know? a form of kink yeah 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 that's totally. someone being submissive to someone else and you know there are couples that are switches where you know it goes back and forth or maybe in the bed one person's the dominant and out of the bed no person is or the other person is um yeah it's it's a really what you know it's almost as varied as saying like you know what is human sex you know right it's a, it's right. a large bdsm is a large subsect of human sex so right. defining it as everyone who does it is had a bad childhood is you know ridiculous and limited and and parroting something that shrinks use to control people and get more work. You know? Right. I yeah. Mean, they, Good point. Shrinks consider it, you know, a malady if you are against authority. You know, there's, it's yeah. uh, oppositional defiant disorder. People get yeah. drugged they, they prescribe and institutionalized for, for that. Well, they do. <laughs> they really do prescribe things for it and put people in mental institutions. You know, I'd they say do. Brendan Robb yeah. was basically institutionalized for that. And, 
He wrote me back about doing an interview on the gumbo, so that may happen. Oh, good, good, good. Uh, I know you were kind of hesitant after it first happened because, um, no, no, you, you, F it. Okay. F it. F oh, I mean, you can I... say it. I'm just like, uh, I'm feeling strong today. What did I do? <laughs> what did I twist uh, out it, it, I, I, I forgot. It wasn't Brendan Robb. It was, uh, what is John Whitehead? So the guy who was representing Brendan Robb did a lot of the work mm. to get him out. Uh, I talked to of, him about state. doing an interview. He was but, but he had already done one with with Lou Rockwell that yeah. pretty much said well, it all. He passed me off before he did. I heard that he passed me off to someone else at his organization and said she'd do an interview. I contacted her. She didn't write back, and then I heard his interview with Lou Rockwell where. You know, there's nothing I could add to that interview, yeah, so I didn't yeah. pursue the other person. But but I think Rob himself would be a great interview. Yeah, I mean, yeah. It, there was a, a a video clip with Rob and Whitehead. I'm not sure if I'm getting his last name right. The the guy who was basically his spokesperson, his sort of legal defense, and yeah. um, you know, it was it was interesting to. See. I didn't seem insane or crazy, and and on his face, on its face, uh, it didn't seem like the government had any case to to use the state arm of psychology or psychoanalysis. I think they, to, I think they really didn't, him. and I think that's what's going to be the outcome of that case. Yeah. Um. I think next time they try to do that, they're going to have their ducks in a row more and find someone mm -hmm. that they have more of a alleged reason. Yeah. The guy was yeah. just talking. Millions of people do what he did. Um, yeah, exactly. you know, and it really, I think it was, I'll have to ask him about this, but my understanding of it is, you know, one of his Facebook friends either clicked report on Facebook or called the local cops and somehow the local, you know, sheriff found out about it or state police or something. And then they contacted the feds. So it was, you know, it was some local dipshit who didn't really know what they're doing or didn't know what the law was, uh, abusing it. Mm, yeah, that makes sense. Another reason not to get rid Fed, of all the state-run police. Not that the feds know what they're doing any better, but they kind of do in a way in that they really don't go after legal action against people unless, unless they're sure they can win it. Oh, yeah. Oh, they're going to go after lo the low-hanging fruit. <laughs> they, they don't want to waste their time with something yeah, that's not going to stick. A lot more state and local matters are thrown out by a jury or a judge uh, than, federal than our federal federal they have a conviction rate in the upper 90s mm, wow didn't know it was that high but that makes sense they just don't bother if they can't win it they don't bother right right, right. um the other thing i worry too that might contribute to that conviction rate is uh when it's a federal case i kind of feel like um the judges are going to be more prone to favoring the federal agents than the actual defendant yeah, I think there are more at the state level and county level. I think there are more judges that have a little bit of uh, oath keeper in their in their heart. Not many, but you know, I've heard of more cases being uh, thrown out by judges at the lower levels on actual constitutional grounds. Well, I feel like you got to be a level. pretty heinous status to make it to the federal judge level. I mean, there's if, that if, too. It is kind of a filter. <laughs> you know, you start out low and you reach and you get up there, and it's like a lot of those people are appointed by presidents too. Mm -hmm. You know, federal yep. judges. Yep. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep. So same thing. Same thing with federal attorneys. People like U.S. attorneys, yeah. like your current governor in Wyoming, who used to be a U.S. attorney. Yeah. So What's, there's there's you got something else? No, no, no. Go ahead. There's a really good interview. I would say one of the best interviews we've had on Anarchy Gumbo. You should check it out. It's an interview with Eric S. Raymond, who uh, is an anarchist and basically invented the open source movement. So, you know, the whole idea of Creative Commons, the whole idea of Linux licensing, you know, the whole idea of, in a way, you know, Facebook, YouTube, podcasting, um, uh, you know, everything that's free on the internet, a lot of that came from him. Nice, <laughs> it's an easy nice. way to say it. And he does, he's, he wrote a lot, you know, he wrote some of the code that's in every Linux distribution. He, uh, you know, did some of the underlying work of how the modern internet works. At the end of the interview, I asked him, so what are you doing today and tomorrow, next rest of this week? And he said, oh, I'm fixing a problem with the internet. <laughs> and, and he didn't a, mean his internet in his home no, like he's gonna no. unplug his router no right. he meant the internet <laughs> the internet and i said what do you what do you mean and he said well you know the way that uh you know like 60 percent of all of the all of the uh web servers in the world are run on apache on a linux server and there's a basic problem 
in the architecture of it of how it handles buffer overflows and it slows down the internet and I'm fixing that and I'm going to release it as a patch when I'm done and mm -hmm. you know and it will be in use in you know seven or ten days yeah. on every server in the world right so. right yeah and you know even even with all that overt helping out with the internet itself I feel like the concept of open source software uh, has done so much to bring the internet into yeah. what it is today um, even just because a lot of the giant internet companies or companies that that have a giant web presence use Linux internally uh, because it's it's more secure and also they don't have to pay you know tons Microsoft. of money to Microsoft to license yeah. all these computers and servers that they're using. Yeah, I learned about him uh, about Eric Raymond from this movie called Revolution OS, which is on Netflix for streaming, and it's great. And it's an interview with it's basically him and about three or four other cats who are equally heavy hitters, um, including you know Linus Linus Torvalds who invented Linux the Linux kernel. What a lot of people don't know is that Linux isn't an operating system. Linux is a kernel, and the actual operating system is most, mostly uh, GNU, which is stands for GNU. GNU is not Linux. It's uh, GNU is not Unix. It's a recursive, yeah, like the animal. And uh, he did a lot of work on that too, Eric. But um, but then you know they, him and Richard Stallman and some other people were building uh, GNU, you know, an open source software system and they hadn't finished the kernel which is the basis of it and then Linus Torvalds came along and said oh I have a kernel and uh, somehow the whole thing got named after him and he's the biggest rock star of it when really he just built the middle thing that everybody else had already built around mm -hmm. but Eric S. Raymond is also a gun guy um, in this movie he opens the movie with uh, saying yeah I was at this convention and this guy came up with a Microsoft badge and kind of gave me this dirty look and said, what What are you here for? And I looked at his badge and I looked at him and I said, I'm your worst nightmare. <laughs> and then like, you nice, know, nice. I was I was thinking I wanted to interview some people in this movie, but I just, they all had this kind of like uh, nanny feel to them. You know, like one of them was speaking oh, really? at, at something called like computer users for responsible society. And I was like, man, none of these people are going to want to be on the gumbo. And, and then, there's this one section called, you know, is open source communist? And people were answering it different ways. And Eric S. Raymond said, no, it's not communism. Communism is where they take you to a gulag and put a bullet in your head. This is completely <laughs> voluntary. And I was like, okay, uh, that's it. the guy. Yeah. 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 Awesome. <laughs> and I didn't even know, you know, I was like, okay, he understands voluntarism and, you know, that, that communism is bad. And then I looked at his website and he's like, I'm a, I'm a libertarian and a gun owner. And you know, I'm like, okay. And then I found out like that part of his website is old. He's not a libertarian. He's an anarcho-capitalist specifically nice. a God. What form is it? There's one, um, there's one David S. Freeman. He calls himself a Friedman anarcho-capitalist. Do you know who David S. Freeman is? No, I actually don't. His basic, uh, theory, Friedman and this guy I interviewed, um, Raymond, uh, Eric Raymond, the basic theory is that uh, anarchy and the free market will prevail not because it's the moral thing, although it is, but the main reason it's gonna, going to going to – did I say fail? I said I mean, succeed. The main reason the free market is going to succeed is it's the most economically viable thing. That's the basis of ah. David Freeman. Okay, okay. Because it's an, basically that it's inevitable uh, since the state – has no is, is an economic basket case. Yeah. Ev eventually, freedom will prevail, yep. or anarchy will prevail, just because it's the most effective economically. And on that word, let's go sell some stuff. Yeah. Yeah. So everyone should go check out the Anarchy Gumbo interview with uh, Eric S. Raymond. He rocks. Yes. Yes. I definitely plan to. <laughs> He's also a black belt in karate. And I said, "You ever heard of a guy named Stefan Molyneux?" He's like, "Yeah, I met him at a Reason magazine event." And I told him what uh, Stefan had said about karate and asked him for a reply. And it's quite um, animated and interesting. <laughs> nice, nice. Yep. Gun Training with the Non-Aggression Principle, Volume 1. Basic Handgun and Rifle with Jared Waltz. First rule of being alive is you own yourself. 
a groundbreaking approach to firearms and self-defense training. Beautifully filmed and easy to understand instructions make this one a must-have. Gun Training with the Non-Aggression Principle, Volume 1. New DVD from Michael W. Dean, available on Amazon. Your house is your property. So I want to talk about a movie. I want to review a movie Nima has not seen. It's called A Guide to Recognizing Your Saints. Okay. It won uh, two prizes at Sundance. It's an independent movie by a guy named uh, Ditto Montiel. And he used to be in a punk rock band called Gutter Boy, who were best known as uh, they received the largest advance that an independent band ever received at that point, which was a million dollars on Geffen Records and then imploded and broke up. But uh, it's a really good kind of coming of age, tough New York story, kind of last exit to Brooklyn-y, but in the 70s, modern kind of with um, Hubert's, uh, Robert Downey Jr. plays the adult Montel, Ditto Montel, like now. Okay. And as a younger man, he's played by Shia LaBeouf. Is that how you say the name? I think so, yeah. Um, who's also the, the star of that movie, uh, Wall Street, yeah. Money Never Sleeps. Ah, okay. And Transformers, I think. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Not yeah. that I've seen it, but uh, I well, know Well, the that. story is that when he tried out for this, uh, Dito Montel, who wrote the book it's based on and also directed it, um, just like he came in, Shia LaBeouf came in to audition for it, and Montel was just like, you know, and like, Nobody would heard of Montel. He was like a new, I don't know how this happened. Like Sting is the executive producer on this movie and Robert Downey Jr. is in it. And it's a little indie movie, but it's great. But uh, Montel, D Dito Montel, Montiel said, uh, like, you're a Disney kid. You can't, you can't play this character. You're not tough enough. And like, you know, got him to punch holes in the wall in his own, in Ditto's office to like convince him he could do the part. <laughs> nice nice well th that gives me yep. a little bit more respect for shia yeah he's really good even, even though his name is lebouf lebouf and shia like and he's jewish that's a weird name sounds like shiite shia shia yeah. yeah but uh i met ditto montiel at a dvd release party for my dvd living through steve diet getty my kind of uh softcore porny art dvd oh uh, yeah, yeah, we, yeah. We, we never talked about on here but um it's a bunch of skinny chicks in weird bondage gear. Um, with with trip-hop music underneath. Yeah, I did the trip-hop music and uh, produced it with my friend uh, with my friend Blaine. But yeah, we had a big record release party at some club. It was packed. There were porn stars there. It was great. And I met Ditto there. Nice. He was a really nice guy. Um, <clears throat> I know something about this movie no one knows that isn't even really covered in the director's, <laughs> uh, director's commentary. Uh, there's a scene where the the star is being met at the airport to come back and see his sick father after he's moved out to LA. Okay. And uh, there's a bunch of people waiting at the airport, you know, with signs with people's names on them, like drivers. Mm -hmm. And one of the names on it is Mr. So-and-so. And it's, I know who it is. And I, I, I didn't even need to check, but I checked the director's commentary and he's like, yeah, that's my friend. And he said his first name. Um, it's a guy I know really, really, really well who is supposed to be in this movie, but he's afraid to fly in a plane so he wouldn't come out from L.A. <laughs> so that's kind of a, a diss or a, a poke, a loving poke at the guy that there's someone waiting for him at the airport when he never showed up to be in the movie. He, he was supposed to be in the movie like an extra or, or what? I don't know. I was trying to figure out which character he would have played. Uh, it must have been an extra because uh, maybe I'm guessing because. He's of an age that like all the characters in the movie were either younger or older. You know, it's a bunch of like 18 year old kids and they're like 50 year old fathers. Uh -huh. And he was kind of in the middle of that. There wouldn't have been a, char a main character I could see he's playing, but I wasn't sure. So I'm not going to say that, but uh, hmm. I don't know. But, but you know the guy and he was t he's too scared of flying to, to go be in a movie. Yeah. So oh. in, in the movie, they had someone waiting at the airport with his name. <laughs> <laughs> on a card. Yeah. That is is super inside baseball there. I know. I know. But funny, funny, fair enough. Yeah. It's but funny. But funny. It's a great yeah. movie, man. But it's it's Le Bouffe funny. It's a guy a guide to recognizing your saints. Really good movie. Okay, okay. Do you like watch a movie every single day or I what? watch about four movies every single day. Four movies a day? Probably. Wow. That's a lot of movies. 
So I watch, I, I watch maybe four movies a year if so, on a good year. I know, which is why <laughs> you know we had this dream of being the libertarian movie review cast, which I'd rather do than bitching about the government. But you'll never do it. We can still do it. My wife finally has a job, so I'll okay. have time apart from her. That good. I'll send you a list of a couple, couple hundred movies you need to watch. Baby steps, Michael. Baby yeah. steps. <laughs> okay. we'll, do, we'll, we'll try it with one and see how okay. it works. Um, so on Reddit, I posted that interview with uh, the Eric S. Raymond hacker guy. I posted it on the, <clears throat> um, the anarcho-capitalist Reddit, subreddit, and I posted it on the um, open source subreddit on the okay. open source subreddit it got voted down once and no con and, and, and which is really weird because like and and on the anarcho capitalist one it got voted up 10 times which is like <laughs> the open source people know that guy's a heavy hitter i think they were down voting the guns and anarchy in the name of the the title probably probably well there was a really funny comment on the open source subreddit it's it you know because the name of the thing is uh eric s raymond father of the open source movement talks about computers guns and liberty and someone on reddit said the open source movement doesn't have a father but it does have a number of weird creepy uncles <laughs> <laughs> okay okay that's funny yeah i mean i guess i guess you wouldn't think of open source as having one creator since it's open yeah. source right and it is open to debate but you know it really has kind of two or three and he was the main one. He came up with the term and he wrote an essay about it that like actually this essay like became viral early on in the Internet and convinced Netscape to release their source code. They were the first major corporation ah, to do that. Okay, and okay. the open source Netscape became the Firefox Fox browser. So he's you know oh. indirectly but strongly responsible for Firefox ex existence, too. There you go. I'm a Chrome user myself, but uh, Firefox is all right. He's also responsible for part of the way that images display in a browser. So when you're looking at porn or looking at kitty cats on the internet, you can thank Eric S. Raymond. I will. I will. Next time I'm looking at porn, that'll be the first thing you'll in my think mind. about Eric S. Raymond. Th thank you, Eric S. Raymond. <laughs> <laughs> So there was a comment on the Guns and Weed movie on on YouTube that said, "What state are they filming in?" And I replied, "Guns, Wyoming; Weed, Colorado." <laughs> Which is pretty much true. I, didn't we say that at some point? We did say that in the movie. Yeah, but you know, yeah. it's weird because I put it up there as sixteen comment, sixteen chapters. So a lot uh, of times people comment on the on first each, chapter. No, on each chapter. Uh, they're watching it and they comment uh, as they're okay. doing it. Okay. Which is so kind that was of before an, they had learned about the weed part. Yeah. Well, okay. that's kind of an advantage too, I think, of, you know, a lot of people don't like that I put it up as 16 chapters. I did it because the computer I had at the time wasn't strong enough to output a single high def file. I could do it well, now. I, th but I also thought you had to have some sort of special nod from YouTube to post something of that way. No, I've been approved for, you know, giant files for years. I was approved early okay. on because I was one of the early invited people to participate in their uh, okay. putting ads on stuff. I was approved uh, a little bit after Guns and Weed came out. I was but. approved because I wrote a co-wrote a book on YouTube for O'Reilly. Ah. Oh, and Eric S. Raymond also has books published on O'Reilly, which is one of the, one of the ways I I enticed him to do an interview. I think that helped. Mm, okay. Maybe because yeah. he doesn't do interviews anymore, barely ever. So, uh, you know, it's good. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. <sighs> so we hey. should, uh, yeah, go on to something else. Okay, okay. Do you want to save the file? I don't have a timer no, here. I don't know where we're no, at. No, we're, we saved it. We're like eight minutes in. Well, I'll just get my other uh, stuff off the shelf here, and then we'll get into the real meat today. Um, okay. Egypt Egypt has issued an arrest warrant for the guy who made the dumb anti-Muslim video. Yeah, I, I saw that. Um, kind of ridiculous. I mean, on what grounds? I, I guess Egypt doesn't have uh, anything oh, their grounds, a First their ground, Amendment. But. No, their grounds were like um, creating civil unrest and insulting religion. Mm -hmm. yeah, Why is so, I feel like I feel like their government is now scapegoating this guy. Yeah, it's not really a movie can't force people to go out and have civil unrest, right? Well, it also puts Barack Obama in a really awkward situation. Um, the The feds are actually providing limited like protection for the guy who made that because he's had so many death threats. 
Um, but they also are considering arresting him, but they can't arrest him on a free speech ground. So they're probably going to arrest him on, he was on probation and one of the, uh, contingencies of his probation was to stay off computers, which he's uh, probably, unless someone else did everything, he's broken that. So, so that they can get him for a violation. Yeah. So they'll get him for that. And then that'll be like a nod to Egypt and to the Middle East and to Muslims. Uh, you know, we arrested him, you know, but, I think a lot of people aren't going to be happy unless he's arrested for having free speech, which mm. is which we're not is there yet. We're not there yet. Well, the other thing is it's a Yahoo article that that you had sent me, and there seems to be some confusion. I mean, we've talked about this before, confusion about what the First Amendment means. And the article seems to state that, you know, part of the reason the Obama administration is in a sort of bind here is the fact that they don't know if to protect this guy or not. But the thing about free speech is is the government has no obligation to protect yeah. speakers, according right. to the First Amendment. Right. It only has an obligation to not pass laws that infringe well, on I don't, speech. Well, I don't think the article was saying that uh the well, first, it, man, it, first it, it does mention other examples of the government protecting people like I think, uh, police standing guard to ensure nazis and ku klux klan can yeah march. but i don't think that that was implying that that's part of the first amendment just something that people do in weird situations cops will do so they don't end up with more of a problem on their hand hmm that was Perhaps. my impression. Maybe I read it wrong. I don't know. Yahoo articles about politics. I read really quickly. I just, I assume they're written by, you know, Hillary Clinton's secretary or something. By what? Hillary Clinton's secretary. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I guess you're right. I should, uh, it, it's not newsworthy to call out Yahoo on getting the first amendment wrong. Uh, yeah. Good point. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, yeah. So, yeah. So is this the guy they're accusing now? i I seem to have missed actually finding the or attributing actual blame. They they call it Nikula Basley Nikula. Now this was I remember reading this was the guy who was using Sam Basil as a pseudonym, but uh, it hadn't been proven yet. So has it now been proven? This guy is taking credit and says, "Yes, I made the movie." Now I don't know, but I'm pretty sure the feds know who really made the movie. Although I think maybe you know Hillary Clinton's brother-in-law, who's in film school, might have made the movie. Who knows? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, probably not. But I mean, there there are things of it that uh, you know I don't want to go conspiracy on every possible thing, but I always want to look at other possibilities. And you know, one is that it's a false flag thing made by our government. Well, see, you don't even have to go that far, but you can you can say regardless of how it was made, the government is using the video as a as something to blame the unrest in the Middle East on. Yeah, because like, a lot of like the everything other, was know, just fine until somebody made this video, and now everything's screwed up. So we yeah, can put well, somebody, all the blame on the video maker. And somebody made the video a while back, and a lot of the mm -hmm. extra unrest started around the anniversary of 9-11, too. Uh, right, and not only that, but uh, State Department officials have come out and said that they don't think the Libya unrest, uh, they think it was planned well in advance of when they saw this movie. Yeah. There, there, were, there were mortars targeted at uh, the embassy uh, from well, far talk, away. You know, talk about planned, and the Marines were carrying guns with no bullets in them. You yeah. Know, is, that, yeah. is that part of the plan? That and and also um, the Independent uh, in UK had a good article about this. They they actually did attribute somebody from the State Department saying they think the attacks were planned ahead of time because they were too organized. Yeah. Uh, they they named that source and then they had another unnamed source saying that they had received an actual warning two days before the attack, like an official warning. Although they don't attribute that to any specific person, they just say an unnamed source in the government. Um, yeah. E either way, things have pointed to the fact that that this whole Libya thing was was uh, planned. Not only that, but I mean, can we really blame a movie for unrest in Libya when we sent troops and bombers into Libya and started a civil war in Libya? We're not going to blame the civil war and bombs for the unrest. We're going to blame a movie. It, does that make any sense to anybody? Right. Right. Scott Horton had a really good point today. He has a lot of really good points. Um. And also, he was doing a little bashing of 9-11 truthers, which I kind of dug, which he seems to be of the same mind of you and me and Ben Quaker of like, it's possible, but you're going to have to offer me more proof than blurry photos with red arrows on them. You know, he basically said, uh, yeah, and there's all these people out there who think, you know, Building 7 didn't have a plane hit it. Why did it fall down? And he's like, because a 120-story building fell on top of it. 
<laughs> you know, and then he said, oh, I probably just lost most of my audience, but there it is. Yeah, yeah. I don't like to get too much into the facts of that, although I don't know if the building actually fell on top of it. But. Well, he also, I know, but he also said, uh, well, that's as, that's giving as much footnoting as most people who are 9-11 truthers do, or a lot of them do. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. I, I guess my point is, uh, it's, it's, and we've said this before, it doesn't change my outlook on the world. If the government did it, 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 bear, it, it, I don't know if that changes my opinion of the American government because my opinion is already as low as it can get. And American another thing government. he said was, yeah, and they say the reason we still got troops over in Afghanistan is because we have to train their army how to fight. You can tell how much they love being trained to do that because they keep killing our guys. And then, <laughs> you know, I mean, really, Afghans, yeah, you got to train them to fight. They're such pussies. They'd never figure out how to use an AK-47 without our training. <laughs> Right. And, uh, and I'm thinking about you know them them fighting off the USSR and uh, and then he's like, but you know Barack Obama signed an agreement to keep them there till 2024. They they'll probably be trained by then. <laughs> I love Scott Horton, man. Yeah, yeah, he's got a nice healthy dose of sarcasm, doesn't he? He's good at it. Yep. So yeah. I came up what's, with this. What's thing. he doing now? He, he's Last time I listened to him, he was on something called No Agenda Radio. Was that no, like his? That new... was no. That's got to be him as a guest. That's um, that's the guy that invented podcasting. What's his name? Uh, I have to look at the Guns and Weed site because he did blurb our movie. Adam Adam Curry. Yeah, that's Adam Curry's podcast, No Agenda. Yeah, the website is shutupslaves dot com. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I thought he was saying he was he was using their feed now, and and he had to get rid of some technical difficulties he was having. I don't know. I'm looking at their site. Ah, yeah. Let's see. S Scott Horton announces he is joining No Agenda Global Radio. Uh, okay. So I maybe. guess they have like an LRN type uh, yeah. network. I'd yeah, like yeah. On, I'd like to be on that. He's, he's joining No Agenda No Agenda Global Radio with Jack Blood, apparently. Mm. So yeah, it looks like they probably have something similar to, you know, a site that has. Has different podcasters. Well, I will write to uh, Adam Curry today. Yeah, a minute ago, I was like, "What's his name?" I forget. And I'm like, "Yeah, my good friend Adam Curry." I'm going to write him and ask him for a favor today. <clears throat> there you go. There yeah, you he's go. great. Oh, there's so many names. Remember, I can't remember names, man. I yeah, remember he invented yeah. podcasting. We got, we owe him that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. that's good enough. Good enough. Yeah. What did he say about guns and weed? This movie is America. Yes, this movie is America. <laughs> <laughs> A great sure film, is. and it is it truly is America. Ah, okay. Adam Curry. Yeah, you got the blurb in front of you there. Yeah, blurbs. So many of them. So many blurbs. So yeah. little time. Excellent. So I came up with something. It's uh, honest people will say "f you." A lot of statists will say "never say f you." It's hate speech, and then they'll demand that the state drone you. <laughs> yeah, they don't want. It's because they're not self reliant. They don't want to take take the conflict on themselves, and they uh, don't. And they don't want to that, even know about conflict, even to the point of saying "f you" to somebody. Nah, and I've always hated that. That's always been my biggest pet peeve. When people have a problem with me not coming and talking to me about it, but calling the park ranger or the cops or telling the teacher. You know, I really liked the way people talked. When I was younger, better before political correctness. An example I can think of is, um, you know, we talked last week about the ongoing resurfacing rumor that McDonald's beef has uh, earthworms in it. And <laughs> when that happens now, when that comes up somewhere, McDonald's uh, has one of their anonymous PR hacks issue a statement like that doesn't even mention worms. That just says like we we must reply to this this thing on CSNBC that to say that McDonald's hamburgers have only ever contained 100% beef and contain no filler or other products. Well, they, they won't even say they're responding to the attack. Right. That'll lead, right. That'll lead people to, to look up the attack. We but, learned that in, 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 but in the, the psychology of advertising. But in the 70s, the founder of McDonald's, Ray Kroc, responded to that, that the first time that earthworm thing came up. He said, we wouldn't use earthworms in our meat. Earthworms are four dollars a pound, and beef is a dollar a pound. <laughs> nice, nice. Yeah, yeah. We make more money if we use beef. I love that true. answer. That's how you uh, should yeah. answer, man. Yeah, people, people yeah. shot from the hip and talked from the gut more in the seventies. They didn't have all these lawyers and nanny bots telling them what to do. I, you know, Roth Barty in sixteen twenty seven asked on uh, on Twitter when he reposted our. Bitcoin swear jar, the 
is this Adam episode? Is this Adam? Is this Adam? With every phone call. He, what? Uh, oh, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. You don't know what we did yesterday. Uh, I do. He says, I can... Atta- I, 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 was th- I was thinking of Adam Curry. I was like, we were uh, trying to get a, get a call from Adam Curry. No. He said, I can attest that pod beef is indeed paleo. <laughs> good, good, good. I'm glad somebody responded to my off-cuff uh, joke. Excellent. So I've lost 12 pounds now, and my diet in three weeks... I'm in four weeks now, but I noticed in three weeks, I went from the body mass index classification of the bottom end of obese into the top end of overweight. And for some reason, I was really happy about that. Yay, we're overweight. Like like, <laughs> like, like, like in Arrested Development when uh, the mad money guy bumps them up to don't buy. Yes, so he's, exactly. He's wearing, we're at don't buy. <laughs> yeah, son, I want to give I, you a hug, son. We're at don't buy. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> I, I had them at a triple sell, but I think they could go as high as a, a <laughs> don't, don't buy. buy. That's funny, man. <laughs> yeah, so I got a correction from last week. Um, I, I was talking about Adam's dad, and I said something about uh, gun owners, but I meant gun buyers. Or No, I said gun buyers, but I said gun owners. And then when I said voluntary sexuality with regards to gayness, gayness and kink, um, I didn't mean those things are a choice. You know, I think you're born that way. Uh, but I meant... But you meant consenting adults, yes, basically. Yes, yes. Yeah. All right. So uh, let's see what else I got. I think um, I said that I'd, I'd love to work for Russia today, but I actually have revised that because I found out they're doing anti-gun videos about America. Like, Really? Um, yes, yes. Wow. See, Adam, I, Adam's gone for three weeks, and now they're anti-gunners. <laughs> wow, I didn't know that. And I, I hadn't seen any libertarians repost RT stuff lately. Maybe they've taken on a new field. Well, if you read my post, The Cutest Gun Grabber in America on the Fiend yes. blog. Did you read that I one? I did read that. I did. Okay, I did. If you go to that guy's link that I linked on his Indiegogo begging page, um, mm-hmm. he links a video from Russia today that's anti-gun, anti-American really? free gun, you know, Second Amendment. See, I feel like that happens with um, people of foreign origin who are commenting in Western media. Like, like who is it? Pierce Morgan bugs the crap out of me. He, he's, he's on American TV. I think he's on CNN. I believe he replaced Larry King. And he likes to go off on gun control from such a condescending high horse like uh, we Europeans know so much better than you Americans and I don't understand how you can be so barbaric as to still have guns in your country. And it's like are you really serious? I mean, you think that you are correct because you live in a nanny state or because you're from a nanny state? Um, g- get a clue. And so if RT is doing this, not only that, but doesn't seem kind of creepy that uh, a TV station funded by a foreign government is is saying there needs to be less guns in American citizens' hands? I'm looking at the video right now. It's Russia Today, and it's called License to Kill. U.S. is the most heavily armed nation in the world, and it shows a I'm looking at a picture of a gun shop. Let's see. I'm on I'm on RT's website. Hmm. Well, is it just is it just the one video? I mean, or is this like a whole campaign there? I don't know, but one video'd be enough for me to not be on there. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that sounds kind of line in the sand like, you know, getting rid of a good opportunity, but I don't have the opportunity. Russia today has not called me. <laughs> Our next caller, Russia Today. Go ahead, Russia Today. All right, let's go sell some things and then come back and talk about the U.S. military and their budget. Hi, I'm Michael Dean from the Freedom Fiends, and like you, I'm concerned with privacy on the Internet. The electronic police state is strangling our previous protections, and the central scrutinizer is trying to squint into all areas of our lives. That's why smart people surf the net with a VPN or virtual private network. I use a VPN from Bola VPN. Bola VPN has your utmost security in mind and will allow you to surf, email, and do other computing tasks without leaving a trail of breadcrumbs across the internet. Unlike many other VPN providers, Bola VPN doesn't log traffic. With Bola VPN, you can change your apparent location or disappear completely. Bola VPN has been around since 2007, which is OG in the VPN world. Bola VPN is easy to install and configure. Best of all, it can be had for less than 25 cents a day, which is a small price to pay for this much security. And if you open a support ticket saying you heard about them through the Freedom Fiends, they'll add three extra days free. That's Bola VPN at B-O-L-E-H-V-P-N dot net.
Ugh, I'm so sick of looking at Steve's wedding pics, and I'm all out of passive-aggressive comments. What else am I supposed to do at work all day? Sick of stalking your ex on Facebook? Yeah! Are you all out of cute cats and autocorrect mishaps to lol at? Duh! Freedom Fiends to the rescue! The Fiends now have a blog. Read all about the latest tyranny today. Dream about lip pair. Laugh while Western civilization collapses. Just click on the cat icon to the right of freedomfiends.com. Freedom Fiends blog. Read it! Rolling, 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 rolling. So I've noticed that a lot of uh, high-level Liberty podcasters are married middle-aged men, like me, Stefan Molyneux, Ben Quaker, Ernest Hancock, <laughs> Ernest Hancock, Alex <laughs> Jones, Mark Edge, Scott Horton. Uh, I think the reason is it gives us a feeling of like importance and usefulness that gets us through our midlife crisis without having to have an affair or buy a sports car. <laughs> okay, okay. Like you don't have the cash to go buy yourself a Ferrari, so you'll buy a nice computer and a microphone instead. Well, and we don't want to cheat on our wives. I mean, you know, we're you good people. You don't want to cheat on the wives. We're good people. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Good people. Okay. Good people. Okay. And middle-aged uh, has a few different definitions, but it's the low end and the high end of their 35 to 65. So you're not there yet. No, no. Luckily. No. You were podcasting <laughs> before you were married. I started podcasting with my wife in 2006. I wasn't, I wasn't podcasting before I was married. Mm -hmm. uh -uh. Except for that one podcast we did together uh, that you okay. can't find anymore. The, the lost podcast. The yeah, lost the, scrolls of Nima. Right, right. That might have it somewhere. It, I don't know. If anybody can find that. that would well, be maybe we could look on um, the Wayback Machine. What's it called? Yeah. Oh, uh, yeah. Google's Wayback Machine. That's, that's a pretty cool thing. It was... Uh, I forgot about that. It was what site was it on? It was on Nestlandia.com or was it on Clone the Homeless? It was on Nestlandia. You didn't put it on Libertarian Punk? You know, maybe I did. I should just search that. It's still there. I thought you did. Um Libertarian Punk. Yeah. You know, I probably did. But I probably I probably hosted the audio file on, on a site that's not there anymore. But let's look this up. Nema interview. Yeah, let's check that out. Um, hmm. Nope. That would have been 2009 or 2010. 2010. 10. Yep, Most 10. people wouldn't do this on a podcast. They really wouldn't. Okay. okay. So you're saying we shouldn't be doing it? <laughs> <laughs> let's see. Yeah. Well, there is, there is a... The website is hosted here. I mean, uh, backed up. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah. Okay. So what, what's up with you, man? What are you up we'll, to? We'll, we'll look for it later. Yeah. I don't know. I was. Um, I know we don't like to talk about politics too much, but uh, did you see the whole kerfluffle about Mitt Romney saying, complaining that 47% of Americans don't pay taxes and they're not going to vote for him anyway? <laughs> so I don't know so why. So, he, he's not going to help him. Uh, yeah, that was the point. He but... doesn't pay taxes, does he? <laughs> well, that was the thing. Um, one of the the I think it was the Post or the Washington Post, maybe it was, it was some some big mainstream paper uh, took him to task for it, saying, "Well, in all likelihood, Romney didn't pay taxes in two thousand nine because the top like companies that were that made more money than Bain Capital didn't pay taxes because they had so many losses from the economic." Yeah, I mean, downfall. I think the reason he won't release his tax, I don't even care about this crap, but. I think the reason he won't release his taxes are one of two things. Either he paid so little it would upset people, or he paid so much that people are going to go, he made that much more than that? Oh, my God. I kind you of know. feel like like both sides it's, – it's another example of both sides being wrong. It's like, yeah, okay, so 47% of people don't pay taxes. Who cares? Nobody should pay taxes. Are you saying that more people should pay taxes? Is that what you're saying as a Republican? I mean – I don't know. I've I've always hated that argument from from the conservative side, uh, complaining about the large number of people out there who don't pay taxes. Yeah. Uh, the only thing I would complain about is that it's not a hundred percent of the country that doesn't pay taxes. Doesn't pay taxes. You know, I have a um. If there, if there are any um uh, programmers out there, and God hope there are. No, I know there are. Um, I would like to call for something that needs to exist. There needs to be something like mumble that sounds better than mumble for podcasting. There needs to be a utility and not just for Linux or something we're going to have to go buy a whole new OS for. 
Um, you know, we're doing mumble, which doesn't require a lot of editing. We don't have to sew the files together, and it sounds pretty damn good, but it doesn't sound as good as when we do double enders. I yeah. want someone to come up with a utility, freeware utility, that will do will do this. You know, we'll do internet telephony without uh, without it sounding and make it sound great. Right, high fidelity. <laughs> yep. Well, um, can't you all pay them for a higher audio quality, like no bigger chunk of bandwidth? No, no, you can't. No, the only okay. thing that would so make you, it so higher, even if you'd wanted to, you can't do that. The only thing that would make it higher quality is if we had bigger pipes, like you know, if we had T one lines or something in our house, which you know, cost a thousand dollars a month or something. Mm, okay. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Screw that. Yeah. Screw that. Yeah. Well, maybe it's a infrastructure problem rather than a programming problem then. Well, maybe it'll be fixed next week after Eric Raymond's patch comes yes, out. Yes, yes. Maybe he'll fix it. Why don't you tell him to fix it for us? I kind of thought it, about it. Fix it, fix it, fix it. I kind of thought about <laughs> it, but, you know, I already, already like kind of felt like, get away from me, kid. You bother me. Not that he was like that, but kind of like, you know, I mean, I asked Kyle. I said I was going to interview him, and Kyle, who's a programmer, Kyle Bennett, you know, I said, this guy's pretty popular among uh, programmers, isn't he? And he he said, well, that's kind of like saying Jimmy Page was a rather popular guitar player. <laughs> I told yeah. you yesterday, you were like, you should interview Henry Rollins. And I'm like, I have his phone number. I could call him right now and probably get an Anarchy Gumbo interview with him, you know, to argue about the state. But I don't, I'm kind of intimidated by that guy. Um, he's, he's so right and he's uh, and nosy and, and he's so smart and he's so eloquent. And, uh, you know, I'd probably be like working for Hillary Clinton by the end of the, the interview. <laughs> I really think and I, I I have more faith in you than I, that. I'm I, kidding, but uh, I really I really think that if he ever challenged me to you know said like hey I you know I did stuff with you before why are you bashing me for being into government helping solve problems you know I really I think I'd say well if you're challenging me to a duel I'm going to hand it off to my second and I'd get Stefan Molyneux to debate him because <laughs> he's better at it than me because I just he, end up saying well yeah if you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Molyneux is actually really good at debating statists. I know. Uh, I've I'd heard like a few of his set his that one up, speech. actually. Hey, I think that'd be awesome. Do you think? Uh, although I'm not even sure if Molyneux would know who who Henry Rollins is. Uh, he does know who he is. I asked him on the interview with him. Ah, uh, okay. Yeah, yeah, I guess I, I guess I kind of recall that. Yeah. Fair enough. Fair enough. But yeah, yeah I, you were saying you don't even know if Rollins is that much of a get anymore, and I think you're right on that. <laughs> I, I think I know, a lot of friend, people are like Henry. Henry, who? My friend came. Uh, all, by. all I really remember him from was was Beavis and Butthead uh, playing his music video "I'm a Liar" on Beavis and Butthead and making fun of it and and singing really loudly. My my friend came over to my house yesterday, and I had I had a guest. I had a friend over. A friend yeah. came over to my house yesterday, and. I hadn't seen him in years, and uh, first thing he says is, "Hey, Henry Rollins is playing in Cheyenne. I'm going down. You want to drive down with me?" I was like, "No." <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, yeah was, I, was, and, was was he in town doing spoken word? Yeah, spoken or? word. And part of it is like, well, no, I'll just wait until someone puts it up on YouTube the next day if I want to hear yeah, it. You know? Yeah. yeah. Waste all that gas driving down to Cheyenne or where? I know. Screw that. I know. Go somewhere you probably can't have a gun. Some college auditorium or something can you yeah. carry guns on campuses in, in wyoming <sighs> i don't know and it varies from place to place i know that in colorado there's some university where they um they have a gun dorm like oh yeah yeah i read or is it utah <laughs> one of them one of them i'm they, pretty uh, sure it was, it was colorado and yeah. yeah people were commenting saying well I, I would rather live in the dorm uh that people aren't going to try to rob <laughs> i know rather than I the know. dorm that advertises hey none of us are armed yeah, there's uh, you know, the Guns and Weed movie is showing at a film festival at the University of Colorado next week. Oh, really? Awesome. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah, there's gonna be a blog post about it Monday. The University of Colorado, Sweet. somewhere there, which should be interesting because Colorado is all full of, you know, we must protect it from the guns now after that shooting. So it'll probably be kind of controversial, I would think. Awesome, awesome. Maybe yeah. we should. Um, what, what, what university? University of Colorado. I'm looking it up. In, I did a blog in, post, but made it pre-post, uh, so it's not up yet. Let's see uh, it's, it it's scheduled to post. Yeah, it's. Uh, let's see. I have to look like I'm editing it here to look. So at if it's it, if it's near Colorado Springs, I could get some of my. It is old Colorado TV. Springs. It is okay. Yeah. I could get some of my old TV buddies to go do a vote on it or something. Really? I will send. Uh, oh, it's showing with the Hunger Games. Here, I'll send you a little uh, blurb on it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. 
Yeah. I've got a, I think a lot of my, my peers from Wyoming went to Colorado Springs as their next market. And I'm pretty sure at least one of them is still there. Yep. So. Show on Saturday, September 29th, 3 p.m. at the Free Minds Film Festival at the University of Colorado at Colorado Springs. Excellent. With Excellent. And the Hunger Games is showing, too. Which you will not see. Uh, I don't know. I'll see <laughs> if I have to. The, mo the movie doesn't do the book justice. I'll put it that way. I think we've talked about that. Didn't Stefan Molyneux renew that, review that movie? Uh, I think pretty much he said the same thing. He, he just wrote it off saying, well... I don't see what all the fuss You probably is about. said, and there's too much icky violence in it. <laughs> he did. He did. He called it well, gruesome. Which my complaint when I watched it was the violence in the movie does not come close to the violence you imagine when you're reading the book. Like well, it, it's another, very, it's very know, PG thirteen. Stefan has also said, you know, people don't need to carry guns; they just shouldn't go to bad neighborhoods. That's 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 ridiculous. <laughs> you know, I take him to task. I take Adam to task because Adam has such a huge audience that falls on his every word that if he says something really, really, really wrong about something I care about, I want to take him to task on it. Same thing with uh, with Stefan Molyneux. Molyneux. But mm -hmm. with Stefan Molyneux, there's also the – he's someone I've really looked up to uh, for forming my worldview. So when he says – you know, and Adam Kokesh has not formed my worldview. He's a guy who's out there and – uh, he's a little too brash for me, and it, it works for some people, and I have no problem with it. And I'm not bitching about it. I'm glad it exists. I'm glad I think he does good things for the movement, but mm -hmm. he's not my guy. It's kind of like you know, when I was in punk rock, you know, I liked I liked Dead Kennedys, I liked Black Flag, and you know, I didn't like the Descendants that much. You know, I don't I like different bands, and Stefan Mullen is one of my favorite bands. Yeah, yeah, I agree. I I don't think Kokesh is anarchist enough for my taste. I mean, no. I think I think he's still too all about political action and now. Do you know that like, from well, from well, current situation, or because uh, he may have changed on that? But he seems to waffle too and talk about he he does. And I get I guess I'm basing my critique on the stuff he said during the Ron Paul campaign when it was still going on uh, a few months back. So I I don't know if hopefully he became like the the predicted outcome that we said where you know people who were for ron paul will become anarchists maybe maybe yeah. kokesh was affected by that trend that we made up in our heads i don't know someone just sent me a an i am wow i just read your blog about the adam thing he smokes so much pot he's like a moody chick on the rag all the time <laughs> couple that couple that Ouch. with a lack of sleep and a really bad record with women and you have a very moody and insecure man i didn't read Yikes. it out loud i didn't write that man some girl just sent me that was it, was it a girl who was scorned, uh, a woman no, scorned? By no, no, it's absolutely not. But someone just sent me that. I shouldn't read that on the air. Well, you did. You yeah. can you can cut it out if you want. I don't care. Ah, I got a back ache today. I can't do any editing because I st I was lifting <laughs> weights a couple days ago to get ready oh, really? for my pod beef with Adam. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay. You thought there might it might uh, come to fisticuffs <laughs> over the internet? No, I don't. Know. I just yeah. you know a part of my diet. I'm like, well. I've been dieting for a month now. I went out and took a bike ride for the first time in about nine months for about a half hour. And then I came home and I was like, well, I've got these weights staring at me from the floor. Maybe I'll talk to them. Excellent. And Excellent. I did too much too quick and pulled a muscle in my back. So, uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm I, pulled, gonna... I pulled a pulled a calf muscle playing tennis. I was trying to be more active too. You know, I'm really liking this better than what we were planning on doing, which I guess we got to do. But, you know, going after what who the hundred top contractors of the u.s federal government are do we want to get there let's get there let's do it okay okay let's do it let's do it um now i guess what we had wanted to talk about was just to show you the sheer I, I what what i took from it is is the sheer amount of money that the federal gi government gives out to people uh so-called contractors i guess they do provide services but i would really tend to think that a lot of their prices are inflated um you know there's there's tons of information out there stating that people like uh um not northrop government who's the other one lockheed uh lockheed of sticking with the consumer market where they were prone to competition, uh, they would just go with the sure thing and, and go after government contracts only because they knew they could get the money and they knew they could charge whatever the hell they wanted. Um, but it, it goes so much deeper than just the military. And so I think we're going to talk a little bit about um, 
the top 100 contractors of the U.S. federal government, uh, the military, top 100 military contractors, and also just the military budget in general of the United States. And uh, I'm going to link all three of these on the cast. My first problem with this list is uh, is the state of California is one of them, and they don't list like what it does for the government. <laughs> right, right. And that was really and, – and they were the only state that I saw. And it wasn't just uh, state of California, and of course I, we're talking about um, well, top 100 lot. U.S. federal contractors, not not military necessarily. Um, this is just federal contracts. It wasn't just the state of California, but it was also uh, the University of California. Yeah, California Institute of Technology. Uh, yeah, that, that's always been the case. I mean, you know, they say the internet was made by the government. No, the internet was made by geeks on their free time who were working at government facilities instead of going to the Vietnam War. You know, there's always been all of the universities, the, the real technical ones, have always uh, had computing sciences that they did contract work for the government. That's how it was paid for. Yeah. And, you know, you could say, well, those guys weren't doing the right thing. And it's more like, well, they could have gone to prison. They could have gone to Vietnam and been shot at and shot people. Or they could have been in a comfy little air con con conditioned office doing what they love. What would you do? Yeah, yeah. Well, nowadays people just do the same thing, uh, but still get to kill people because of drones. They get to sit in their comfy yeah. air conditioned office and blow people up. Um, I did a little digging and I couldn't really find out what the state of California <laughs> spends all this federal money on. I'm sure it's there. I, I did. I think I have a theory. Thing. I have a theory. Um, so this is money the federal government pays the state of California for some product or service, right? Correct. Um, well, it could be that's how they do the accounting for the other universities because the only university I saw was the Caltech, but uh, or what was it? California, the Regents of Cal University of California and the California Institute of Technology. Um, but it may be just it, part of it may be just how they funnel the money to the colleges because I'm sure they do military stuff at more than those mm -hmm. two colleges. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, the other thing I think is probably for is for recruiting because California is the most populated state. There are recruiters friggin everywhere. And I think that's part of what they're paying the state for. It's a billion dollars, though. One billion dollars. Yeah, but the Pentagon buys nine hundred dollar hammers. Remember? Yeah, yeah, <laughs> exactly. Which in the movie Independence Day, it turns out that that was just a money funneling uh, accounting trick to fund the black ops oh, area for, for 51 the aliens. stuff. Yeah, right, right. To keep the aliens uh, alive in formaldehyde or something. <laughs> right, uh, which is kind of Paul, Paul Krugman thinks we should do that even if there aren't aliens and pretend there are aliens <laughs> and spend that much money on hammers from the yeah. government point of view. Um, so yeah, and, and you know, $1 billion. That's actually on the smaller end uh, of the list for the state of California. The top the top on the federal contractors is Lockheed Martin. And um, 2010 is the most up-to-date data we found. And uh, it was $35.8 billion. Um, the total for the top 100 was uh, $284.7 billion. So more more than a quarter trillion dollars of your money. Of your money now. Now I don't know. I don't know why anybody in the world would want to give their money to Lockheed, Boeing, Northrop, General Dynamics, the state of California. I mean, uh, Halliburton. Why? Why? What? What benefit does that give? Give us? I can't think of any. I don't know. There's a Halliburton truck on like every corner in my town. You lived here. Yeah. There's white yeah. pickup trucks that say Halliburton mm -hmm. on the side of them. Mm -hmm. I mean, yeah. like, and people bring them home. It's like I think it's the company car. There's one parked around the corner for me every day. Yeah, every yeah and night. I think that's uh, I think that's mostly uh, oil production. Uh, plus the fact that uh, Casper is Dick Cheney's hometown, and he's a giant muckety muck in Halliburton. Yeah, oil production in Wyoming is is the purest thing those people do. I'm fine with it. Uh, yeah, yeah. I'm not fine although with them doing although it, I wouldn't be surprised if if they funnel some of their government money to those kinds of things and use it to pay their workers. Um, so I'm sure there's something untoward to do well, that. If, if if they were getting all of their money in the free market by drilling oil, more power to them. Well, corporations when they do their accounting for the various subdivisions compartmentalize things, but it's never really that compartmentalized. Well, it's all fungible. So if they have the money to compartmentalize in one area, it's because they were able to fund their their military budget or their their government contracting budget through the government. So 
Yeah, you can say none of that money touches the people, but the reason they have the money to spend on the, the Wyoming oil drillers is because they get government money to do other things. Yeah. I mean, m- money's all fungible. If, if you're giving somebody money, they can they can use that. They don't have to use that money. You're still helping them out. You know, they can they can then free up other money. It's kind of like opportunity cost. Worms. So what else? Worms. What else um, is on this? Who are they? Let's just read some of the top contractors. Oh, well, uh, let's 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 nail it down here. Are, uh, do you want to talk more about do you want to go off the list of 100, 100 contractors of the U.S. federal government or the military contractors? I want to cover it all in the next 20 minutes. Top federal contractors, number one, Lockheed Martin. Number two, Boeing. Number three, Northrop Grumman. Number four, General Dynamics. Number five, Raytheon. Number six, United Technologies. Those are all drone companies or companies yep. that make parts for drones. Uh, mm-hmm. It's not mm-hmm. all they do. You know, Aerospace and defense is what they're listed as, all of them. Yep. Uh, you know, and it goes down to even like I think Glock is on here, or it's on the top military contractors. Uh, the company that makes Glock. I don't know if it's actually. Yeah, it's, it's called, called Glock, Glock GmbH or something like that. Yeah, 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 yeah. You see that here. Um, United Space Alliance LLC is number thirty-eight on this list. Some of the names are really Creative Associates, number forty. <laughs> that's that's dude. That's fungible. Yeah. Uh, open to interpretation. FedEx is one of them. Yeah. For, Merrick. For Merrick's services. a pharmaceutical company. Dell Computers is on here. Yeah. Yeah. I also, I thought about um, trying to compare this to campaign contributors, um, but well, I didn't I really, I didn't really see a, a big correlation, at least for the, the current data for well, the Well, the Department of election. Defense is the top, um, through PACs and through, like, employees uh not directly but the department of defense is the largest donator to both uh barack obama and mitt romney okay okay um and and i guess it depends on where you get your data uh and what what time it came out and they Um, ain't given nothing to ron paul actually according to open secrets the army org uh ron paul his his top donator was u.s department of defense well, that's from military personnel. The other, right. the, the other is from, uh, from PACs, right? And from right. you know, it's not from soldiers. And also, I think the data I'm looking at probably came out during the when the primaries were still going on. Um, and according to that data, which I think came out when the primaries were still going on, uh, Mitt Romney was mostly most of the banks were contributing to Mitt instead of Barack. Well, so well, I don't I don't know if they were doing that during the primary because they wanted Mitt to be the Republican so that Barack would win. I'm not sure. Well, before we go into this final part of the discussion about uh, commerce at the barrel of a gun to buy gun barrels, let's go sell some things consensually. Okay, good seg. Want to contribute to Liberty but short on cash? You can help the Freedom Fiends without even spending a post-1964 dime. Download uTorrent and start seeding Fiends episodes. Follow twitter.com slash fiendtorrents to grab the past episodes and new ones as they post. Leave your computer on seeding the torrents while you're at work or asleep. The more people seeding the Fiends, the more drone-proof we'll be when the boot comes down. That's twitter.com slash fiendtorrents. All right. In the next 20 minutes, NEMA is going to completely psychoanalyze the U.S. military industrial complex. <laughs> don't, don't commit me to that. Go, um, go, 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 go. Okay. Well, I did want to talk about the military budget of the United States as well. Uh, a lot of to do is always made, and it's kind of um, well known that, you know, the United States government spends more money on the military than any other than all well, the other I mean, countries in the, in, in the world combined. When we were looking at that other list, it was you know it was the whole government budget, and the top ten things on it were military were contractors. Military. And then, yep. interestingly, a couple after that were like pharmaceutical companies. Which you right. Know, is right. that buying buying pain pills for grandma, or is that buying things to drug soldiers and dissidents, <laughs> or what is that? Uh, good point. Uh, the other thing, um, you know, not only does America or the United States government spend more on the military than all the other countries combined, um, 
It's actually, they don't spend the most as a percentage of GDP. There's a map on the, the wiki page for military expenditure, and the United States only spends about 4%. I mean, that's still a lot. 4% of their gross domestic product. Uh, other countries, though, are higher, but all the countries that are higher, or at least the majority of them, were you know on the Saudi Arabian Peninsula. It was like Saudi Arabia, Yemen, Oman, Turkey, Iraq, Syria. Um, They're all defending against Jordan. Iran. I mean, against <laughs> Israel. Well, not that, not just that, um, but for instance, Saudi Arabia, um, they probably get a lot of that money that they spend on their military expenditures from United States foreign and aid. And was that included in this or not? No, foreign aid is not included in the foreign military budget. Foreign aid is budget. huge, man. Right. And I mean, so I, I would say that if, if we're giving other countries like Saudi Arabia uh, money, that they then turn around and use to buy fighter jets and things from from Northrop Grumman and and Lockheed Martin. Isn't that just the same as if we bought it directly? From Us Lockheed? giving money to Saudi Arabia would like be like a lawyer panhandling me. <laughs> it really would. I mean, the, <laughs> right, right, right. the growth, the average income in Saudi Arabia is so much higher than the U.S., isn't it? Or is it just a few rich people? It, well, yeah. If you if you actually break it down, it's not like the average person is better off there. I'm gonna look um, it up. But but my point is is that a lot of the money we spend that ends up going towards weapons and weapons from you know the giant American defense contractors, it's not necessarily folded into our numbers because we pay other countries uh, millions of dollars that they in turn. Uh, agree to buy weapons from United States based defense firms. Um, so even though there are other countries that spend more as a percentage of GDP, uh, I'm, I'm willing to bet uh, a lot of that funds, if not the bulk of those funds are coming from US foreign aid. Well, the, um, the average income in Saudi Arabia is $22,000, which I think is really weighted. I mean, in America, it's $48,000. Um, I think there's a bigger middle class in America. It's shrinking, but there's a bigger middle class in America than in Saudi Arabia. In Saudi Arabia, it's you know a couple thousand people who are richer than God, and then a bunch of people who aren't right. very well. And, well and I don't know if your your lawyer panhandling analogy is is as apt because. Our foreign aid to Saudi Arabia really isn't a charity thing. I don't. I don't. I, first of all, I don't think any of our foreign what are we aid buying? Is, is actually true charity. What, what is what, the U.S. buying? We're buying uh, them only selling oil in dollars. Um, so the fact that, that they will only trade oil for American dollars is what gives America its its reserve currency status in the world. I mean, See, that doesn't that's, make sense to me. But it does when you think about the fact that we can print dollars. Because to me, it's like, well, it doesn't right. matter what you exchange for what good, you know, in what denomination, what country's money. But then it's the countries can print that money. Well, exactly. Because if if you are from France, you can't go to Saudi Arabia and say, I'll give you one million francs and you give me su mm -hmm. such and such barrels of oil. You have to first buy dollars. So like everybody how, needs to buy dollars before they can buy oil. On the, on the Saudi Arabia wiki, wiki page under legislature, it says, none, legislation by king's decree. <laughs> right, right. Is that King Hillary? King Hillary? Yeah. <laughs> I don't know where you're going with that, but uh, just that you know, we tell them what to do; they tell us what to uh, do. Ah, uh, ah, yeah. I'm saying we. I don't mean we. No, don't, don't definitely government. don't mean we. I'm not um, we. I don't make these decisions. But yeah, it's it's a very incestuous relationship. In 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 return for uh, them basically giving us, uh, you know, the petrodollar or American federal reserve notes being the world's reserve currency uh we prop up their dictatorship and we keep we we basically protect them mer militarily and and provide them with the foreign aid to buy the world's best weapons um america wants fuel to get it it needs puppets so what's 10 million dead if it's keeping out the russians well trained by the cia with yankee tax monies at fort bragg the peace corps builds us labor camps when they think they're building schools Ha! Is that uh, Dead Kennedys? Yeah, from about 30 years ago, but true as, <laughs> ever, true as it ever was. Oh, yeah. 
com- completely true as it ever was. Um, so yeah, I, I definitely wanted to, to make that point that there is more money out there spent on American foreign policy and defense than just what you see from the actual numbers because there is also so much American foreign aid that goes to the same cause. Um, the other thing is you can't really get uh, – you know, people are always talking about audit the Fed and audit the Fed. Uh, what about audit the Army? Um, <laughs> according to to the wiki page and the Government Accountability Office, uh, the GAO, whose job – you know, in my latest blog post, I call it an oxymoronically named agency, the Government Accountability Office. It's like, yeah, right. Um, but it is technically their job to make sure that uh, <laughs> the government isn't too wasteful to where people will notice it overtly. Um, but they were unable to, to actually – uh, provide an audit opinion uh, in 2010 because of widespread material internal control weakness, significant uncertainties, and other limitations. So basically, the Government Accountability Office says that the defense industry, the Department of Defense, is so corrupt and bad at its bookkeeping that they don't even know where to begin with an audit. <laughs> and it didn't just happen in 2010. It also happened in 2011 um, with the Department of Defense. So uh, they said, uh, we are not able to deploy the vast numbers of accountants that would be required to reconcile the books manually. So there, there is way too much uh, that could be going on as far as corruption to e- that the Government Accountability Office doesn't even know how they would conduct an audit. Those are your tax dollars at work, folks. I'm uh, stealing um, time from the fiends. I can tell. I can tell. I'm talking to the dime card guy working out a button deal. <laughs> yes, yes. So while while they're working on death dealing drones, uh, we're working. I'm doing on, the free market, man. We're working on freedom dealing buttons. Yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah. So that that's basically what what was my takeaway from this whole uh subject of what the the federal contractors, um. What what the contracts are that they get, percentage of money that the feds spend on different things. And, you know, we really did just scratch the surface of the most obvious, which is the military. Um, we could we could go off on this a lot more in other directions as far as entitlements go. Um, but I guess you got to start with what the biggest thing is, the military-industrial complex, by far. Yeah. Word. Um, word, word, word. Yep, yep, yep. Yeah. So, did you have anything else to add about the the defense contractors and the federal contracts, Michael? What? Huh? I'm talking about dime cards, man. I thought you were talking about buttons. I just don't care about the government, man. I mean, I care about it, but I'm really sick of caring about it. I'd rather you, talk you, about you movies. You care about it? You care about it like a little baby that you don't want to drown in a bathtub? <laughs> what? <laughs> what is that from? Don't want the you want the government to be small enough to where you can drown it in a bathtub. But you said a little baby I could drown in a bathtub. Well, well, I'm I'm assuming that's what he meant by drown it in a bathtub. I don't know, man. I don't think that uh, is helping that analogy when you say like a baby you can drown in a bathtub. That makes people go, no. Somebody think of the children. No, it's going to be a little little angry violent thing. A little possum. <laughs> a little don't care a about wolverine. Possums. A wolverine. You can drown no, in the bathtub. No, not a wolverine. <clears throat> Wolverines are too awesome. I don't know. There's okay. no animal that's not awesome, so I don't really know which one to say. Yeah. So yeah. we didn't cover all three of these pages. We covered the first two, right? There's another one. Uh, I thought we covered all three. The, the other one, the list of United States defense contractors, it was really just – it didn't have amounts. It was just a list alphabetically of uh, – of companies with flags of the countries they're from next to them. I didn't get a whole lot of value out of that because I don't want to sit there and research all of these companies and see who they are and what they do. Uh, you know, interestingly, both the Saudi Arabia and the USA uh, wiki articles are protected, meaning you can't edit unless you're a respected editor on here. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah. Oh, uh, no, strange. not the Saudi Arabia one, just the American one. Interesting. <laughs> Everyone hates America, man. Everyone in Europe. Probably with good reason, you know, for a lot of what they do. Yeah, I just hope they hate the American government because then I would have not to the agree people. with them. 
Yeah. Yeah. People are yeah. good, man. Al- although you said in your experience that wasn't necessarily the case. You were getting crap for being an American. I always got France. beat up for being an American in uh in was it England or Ireland? Uh some people like pulled a guy in a bar off of hitting me. Yeah, for being, yeah. For being American. Yeah, you've, you've talked and about it. But he was like, he was like the local drunk. You know, they were like, come on, Barry. Barry, calm down. Let me buy you a pint, uh, Barry. Come on, Barry. You know. uh, it was just an excuse for him to get his... Uh, yeah, his, yeah. His punch lust Get out. his punch on. <laughs> get, get his punch on. Get his fight on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Get his beef on. Scottish soccer hooligan kind of guy. Hey, they eat beef for breakfast in England, man. They're they fighters. Eat beef, they eat beef for breakfast? <laughs> Literally and figuratively. <laughs> Uh, Some yes. of the worst food I've ever had is English breakfast food from a pub. Pubs all serve breakfast. There are a lot of them People, serve breakfast there. Because you, you go to the pub and drink first thing in the morning? I guess. Yeah. Like, you know, I was out walking. I had jet lag the first time I went there, the first couple of days. And I was up really, really early. And I was out walking around and watching stores, shops open up and stuff. And there was nowhere to eat. Like not even like the corner store was open to get peanuts or anything, and but the pub was open and there it said breakfast special, you know, one pound fifty or whatever, including a drink. And I didn't drink, but I just went in and got the breakfast, and it was uh, it was like burnt baked beans covered in molasses sauce. Um, it was sausage that looked like. World War Two surplus sausage. <laughs> you know, it, it really it looked like British Army reserve meat from World War Two. Nice. Um uh cabbage no coleslaw. No, sauerkraut. Or as they the Americans called it in World War Two, victory cabbage. And um something uh, like, you know, uh, a hard bun. <laughs> uh, yeah, I've heard they had bad food. I've never been to England, so I don't know, man. Uh, as far as breakfast goes, I can eat bacon and eggs pretty much every day of the week. I think I'm gonna no have. Uh, I think I'm gonna have eggs for lunch. That fits fits eggs my plan. Lunch. Yeah, it's yeah. part of my diet. I yeah. I've been smothering everything with this hot sauce. I can't even pronounce. It's got a rooster on it, and you buy it. Sriracha. By the court. Sriracha. That's it. Yeah. 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 yeah DJ's or, daughter, as we as we call it, cock sauce. Because DJ's daughter turned us on onto that. Uh, because it was, I mean, I've used it a million times in restaurants in LA. It's on every restaurant in LA practically, yeah. but it is in, in Austin too. I didn't know it was something you could buy and we were in oh, Walmart totally. and, uh, yeah, DJ's daughter found that and said, Oh, this stuff's great. And it's really cheap and it's really good. And it's not too hot to where you can actually slather stuff with it. No. And it's super flavorful. Like yeah. and it goes good on everything. Have, yeah. have you had it on a bacon cheeseburger? It is like the best thing dude i have it on on ice cream i have it on yogurt no i'm kidding but uh <laughs> i don't eat ice cream and i wouldn't put it on yogurt i put uh i, I have this new thing i have where i every morning for breakfast i have plain yogurt and then i put in cinnamon orange peel dried orange peel and some other spice cardamom maybe i don't know something DJ li- leaves out for me excellent and then i take um we buy frozen berries we were buying fresh berries but they go moldy so damn quick they so do. we buy yeah. frozen You're berries and I take two bowls and I pour some frozen berries, mix frozen berries in the bowl, pop it in the microwave for about a minute and a half while I'm mixing these powders into the plain yogurt in another bowl. And then I pour the hot fruit into the yogurt and stir it in. And it's it's ah, amazing. That sounds wonderful. Yeah. Which, yeah. you know, I said I'd start talking about the Fiend's Diet. That's the breakfast of the Fiend's Diet. Okay. Okay. I've, bec- I've become fond of, uh, if I'm not eating bacon and eggs in the morning, I'll usually eat, uh, a smoothie. Um, and, but I don't, I don't add any sugar. I, I, and I don't add ice. If you freeze bananas, they actually have a consistency like ice cream when you blend them. So I freeze bananas and I throw like, uh, half a banana in with some yogurt and berries. We still buy fresh berries because we go through them so fast. We have no need to buy frozen berries. Because, uh, you know, uh, a, thing, a thing of blueberries or a thing of raspberries will last three days tops in our house. Uh, and then I blend I blend berries, yogurt, and bananas together and, and eat it or drink it. It's and, you delicious. know, there may be some people listening going like, what does this have to do with liberty? Why are you talking about this? Why aren't you talking about the tyranny of the government? Because... Without the tyranny of the government, this is what we'd be podcasting about. We'd be just <laughs> podcasting about things we enjoy and ways to make your life better. Yeah, yeah. We'd be the male Martha Stewarts of we would. being awesome. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I mean, you know, I've never liked the idea of single-issue podcasts anyways. I mean, when you think about it, like, 
you know, what's the freedom themes about? It's about uh, it's about freedom, which is about everything. Yeah, I mean, it's about you know. I described it to Eric S. Raymond when I was trying to interview him as uh, a libertarian anarcho-capitalist firearms computer ser- computer security podcast. That's anarchy <laughs> but, gumbo. But really, really, it's so much more. It's just it's whatever. Kink, it's kink. It's cats. It's dogs. It's hip hop. It's you know. So's the fiends. Yeah. Yeah. Yep, yep. You know, Eric S. Raymond also signs everything with capital letters, his initials, ESR, like I do, MWD. Ah, okay. It's nice. kind of cool. Uh, like, people just, refer to him as that. Like, someone was like, oh, great to see an interview from ESR. Yeah, that's pretty dope. Pretty dope. Yep. Um, uh, might as well open it up to another uh, category then. I wanted to bitch about video games for a little bit. Well, I got that's something first that's kind of funny. Somebody just sent me a, an email saying, oh, man, I was supposed to do this thing for you and I didn't. And I'm really sorry. I should be probably called out on your show for not doing that. And I wrote him back, already done it. <laughs> <laughs> nice. I don't remember. Who did you call out? I'm not going to say. Because uh, he's, well, he's, he's, really he's offering to make good. Ah, uh, okay. okay. Yeah. Fair enough. You're just, you're just razzing them. Yeah. Okay. Okay. I'm just saying how I roll. You know, I really think people talk about, uh, you know, I mean, I'm not a threat to anybody, but I think I have shown on here that I, I, I hold grudges for 30 to 40 years. I mean, I have beefed with people that did, I haven't seen in 30 or 40 years on here before. Yeah. I don't know why you do that, man. I feel like that's unhealthy. Like, I think it's why, an addict why, why, thing. Why, I think, why hold I think, on to the beef? I think people who tend to become addicts tend to have that kind of holding on to resentments. Uh, and I was an addict for a long time. And I think there's something about the way people are wired <laughs> to where they do that, which is, you know, why in 12 step programs, one of the steps is like making amends for things and getting rid of your, uh, okay. getting okay. rid of your, your resentments. You know, so at some, at some le- level, you're addicted to the grudge. Yep. Like Maybe. it gives you, it gives you, yeah, it does, of- you know. You lift weights and then you go like fight with Adam Kokesh on nah. Uh, <laughs> no man, I'm pure. I have no. Gr- yeah, I like beef. I like beef. I like I yummy beef. pod beef. beef. But you know, for it gives a really bad taste in the mouth. Beef. It's what's good for plants. <laughs> it's what plants crave. <laughs> nice, nice. Yeah, but uh, no, nah, it beef, beef, and this is a good place to wrap up here. Beef. I know you got something else to talk about, but this is a really good ending place. Can we save your video games for next week? Yeah, I won't be upset about it next week. So okay. it's not really that. It's, it's, <laughs> no, it's not really that be, important. You'll be losing sleep thinking about me cutting you off and like doing push-ups, and you'll get. Like, <laughs> I'm Bible, the grudge for thirty you'll, years. You'll get Bible quotes up tattooed on your arms and legs, and like bad pictures of me. <laughs> yeah. No, um, but the thing about beef is it does give you kind of a high beefing with people and fighting with them and resenting them and being right or thinking you're right but it gives you a hangover and it's not a pleasant hangover and it's not good for your heart literally i mean it makes your heart pound to where like you know yeah. you get poisoned by adrenaline and your you know your your muscles hurt yeah yeah and your i would I, I would i would advise against beef but i think we use the term pod beef jokingly like i i think yeah I think yeah. what what has ended up happening with Adam it will end up being productive for both you and him and uh, Liberty Media listeners everywhere. I, I don't think it, it has ended up being unhealthy, although I think there were some unhealthy parts of it. Uh, I think I think with your latest post, you know, where you explain the problems you had with Adam's statements, uh, I think I think only good can come of that. Oh yeah, I mean it was a well reasoned uh, essay. You yeah, know, yeah, exactly, exactly. And I, I hope I, I, I don't think he's responded to you yet on it, but I hope he just says, "Well, I appreciate the the criticism. I I understand how that could have, you know, uh, ruffled your feathers uh, and ruffled the feathers of those who practice kink. And I'll try to be more sensitive in the future. And maybe he will actually be more sensitive about uh, subjects like that rather than making sort of crude jokes. Yep. Well, you you can never really like. I mean, you can hope for people to respond to a certain way, but you can't really expect anything. I don't even put expectations on it. It's I say expectations yeah. are appointments with resentments. <laughs> okay, okay. That's a good one, huh? Yeah. Well, I, I, I didn't say I expect him to. I said I hope he will. Um, I, guess, I guess a hope, though, is just an expectation. So, 
splitting hairs there. I think that's something nice. Speaking of uh, free market, it's another good place to end it. I just got a spam from Amazon that's not a spam because I'm signed up for this. That a Spamazon? <clears throat> yeah, it said Master of Cats, which is my Amazon name. <laughs> Master of Cats, a customer just told us your review was helpful to them while shopping on Amazon. Yay. Was Master of Cats, oh, yeah. also known as Pussy Master. <laughs> well, there's a double entendre, but yes. uh, it's it, it's uh, it was for the Art Tube MP USB Series Two preamp, which I uh, bought and used for like two podcasts, and it was amazing. And then I was like, "That's too much work." <laughs> Although uh, Frank ended up buying the same brand, I don't think it's the same model. But I should have uh, just sold him mine, man. And mine's all hot rotted with the the cool. Oh tube, yeah, with the, the, the Russian with the Russia, tube. with the Russian tube. The Russia Today tube. Yes, yes the yes. RT three thousand. No, I don't know yes. what it is. Yeah. Yeah, I guess you could have, but uh, I think it's good for Frank to get out there and buy his own gear. I think it is, and I'm I'm digging his help on the blog. And uh, yes, yes, yeah. he 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 blogs as Navid. Yeah. Which is his his Persian middle name. Yep. So, kudos to him. Kudos to uh, everybody who's not a statist. And for all you statists out there, um, I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry too. Let's have another moment of silence for. St- Last time was for victims of the state. Let's have it for statists. All right. Okay. Okay. Ready. May, may they find the truth. All right. Excellent. I uh, I told Eddie Free about that, and he I said, I think you should do a public moment of silence with a bunch of people somewhere for victims of the state, and he really liked that idea. I think it's a good idea. Or or do a, a candlelight vigil for all the victims of, of the, the state, state, like on the White House lawn or something. Yeah. Yeah. Although, Although did, did that did that happen in, in the seventies? Did people come do a candlelight vigil for all the victims of Vietnam in front of um, the White House? Yeah, but it's always for specific things. I think it'd be great for just the victims of the, the state. Victims of the that state. would be as the op- thing. as open ended as that. Yeah. 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 Okay. All right. News you can use if you're an activist. Yep. <laughs> all right. Worms. Fiends. Thank you. Peace. Hello, freedom fiends. It's your boy Dean from the U.S. Get the U.S. out my bloodstream. The Freedom Fiends podcast is covered by a Creative Commons Attribution Sharealike 3.0 license. Do what you want with it and spread it around. Tell two friends. Make copies. Email it to everyone you know. Go on the site and comment. This is a conversation. Every week, we'll have an exciting new episode where Michael W. Dean and Nima Vadati weave their own unique take on the way the world works and how to find your place in it. Available from freedomfiends.com. That's F-R-E-E-D-O-M-F-E-E-N-S dot com. Freedom Fiends is proudly syndicated by Alterati.com and the Liberty Radio Network at LRN.FM. Subscribe and tell two friends. And remember... The only power they have is the power you allow them. We're not saying the Freedom Fiends are the one true path to anarchist liberation, but it's a good one. If you want to put your voluntarist money where your mouth is, consider making a donation to the Freedom Fiends. Go to freedomfiends.com and click on the spinning coin on any post. Then make a one-time gift via PayPal or set up a monthly contribution of as little as $3. Giving to the Freedom Fiends helps advance education of horizontal liberation throughout the world. The Freedom Fiends. We work hard, so send us some money.